Pretty soon you're a hipster in a BuzzFeed video killing a chicken in an alleyway. It's a slippery slope. I'm Mike, and today, a Q&A. I normally don't do Q&As. I'll normally just get a question and make an entire video about it, which is pretty much half of my videos, in case you didn't know, are from random comments that I decided to make a video out of. But today, I'm just gonna go through and take some of the questions that I don't really feel like making an entire video about and just putting them into one. All right, first question. What is your view on backyard chickens and honey? And it seems like people are always trying to define the edges of veganism, where it starts and where it stops, understandably. But there are also people that are always trying to push the boundaries to include more animal products, like vegans, who are essentially a walking oxymoron and I do not consider vegans, in case you're wondering. The idea behind having backyard chickens for eggs is that they're just kind of chilling out there, having a great life, and they happen to leave some eggs behind that they don't need, so you take them and it's all good. But they're actually a lot of reasons I don't support this. Four reasons, to be exact. Let's start with number one. The first is that whether you like it or not, you're establishing an exploitative relationship with an animal. The animal is there so that you can take something from it, take a byproduct. And as for the hen, we know that laying eggs is taxing on their system. Instead of just laying three or four eggs like it would in nature and just sitting on them, you take away the eggs and they lay more and they take away and they lay more, blah, 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 blah. Number two, as James Aspie says, you're relinquishing your vegan title just so you can eat one type of food. And I think this is a really important thing because because the more people that say they're vegan, the more normal it becomes, and the more veganism is normalized, then the easier it will be for people who maybe don't consider themselves early adopters to try out the diet and the lifestyle. Number three, eating backyard chicken eggs means that eggs are something that you eat, and I've seen this happen in real life, it opens a floodgate to eating anything with eggs, baked goods that contain eggs from random places, and maybe an omelet at that chic brunch spot that you would like to think doesn't, but guaranteed does have eggs from factory farms. Pretty soon you're a hipster in a BuzzFeed video killing a chicken in an alleyway. It's a slippery slope. Number four, eggs are extremely unhealthy. They are second in cholesterol only to brains. And from this study, this is what happens after you eat a meal with no cholesterol slash eggs, just stays flat. And here's what happens when you eat varying levels of cholesterol, it just spikes upward. And you can do that three times a day. No thank you, eggs have been shown to be comparable in terms of artery damage to smoking. And as you may have heard by now, it is illegal for egg companies to advertise eggs as being healthy or even nutritious at all. So, no. Okay, before I get into honey, I have another cholesterol question that I'll just do right now. To paraphrase it, it is essentially, is eating cholesterol that bad for our arteries since our body produces so much more than we eat? Their question was sparked from this blog article, which was essentially putting people at ease to eat as much cholesterol as they want, with wise quotes such as, eating cholesterol has very little impact on the cholesterol levels in your body, calling anyone who says otherwise charlatans. So yes, virtually all major health authorities around the world are made up of charlatans. All right, the quote that actually spurred the question, quote, about 25% of our daily intake of cholesterol, roughly 300 to 500 milligrams, comes from what we eat called exogenous cholesterol, and the remaining 75 of our intake of cholesterol, roughly 800 to 1200 milligrams, is made by our body called endogenous production. My response, firstly, that 75% figure is in no way intake. You can't just call things that the body makes naturally intake so people feel better about eating them. You can eat infinite fat because your body totally makes more fat than you eat. I mean, look at all this fat intake around my waistline. That means I can eat an entire dozen donuts and be fine. No, it's better to look at it like your body has a baseline level of cholesterol that it functions perfectly at, and anything over that risks gunking up the system. Because adding 25% to a system can have drastic effects. Imagine adding 25% more water to the ocean. What I'm saying is, well, vegans in the US, for example, might have 25% less cholesterol exposure, their LDL levels are about half that of the US average. And as the AHA says, quote, LDL cholesterol is considered the bad cholesterol because it contributes to plaque, thick, hard deposit that can clog arteries and make them less flexible. This condition is known as atherosclerosis. So if you care about your arteries, don't make life decisions based off that blog and don't eat cholesterol. 
All right, now finally back to the second topic of the first question, honey. I avoid honey simply because that, in addition to not binge drinking almond milk, which is horrible for bees as well, it's a great way to re reduce bee suffering. And you're probably thinking, what? I have to worry about bee suffering too? I would say it depends on where you are as a vegan. If you are a new vegan and you're just still trying to get out like animal major meat and other animal products, then you should probably not worry about it. But once you settle into that and you're ready to become a level 10 vegan, or maybe I should say level two vegan, really, then you should get rid of honey because any scale of commercial honey is pretty hard on the bees. They essentially take more food than the honeybees need, and there's a massive die off at the end of the season. And so I'd rather not contribute to that. This is not a video about insect sentience, but wasps, for example, can determine different faces of other wasps which shows a certain level of intelligence, and bees are very similar, and they are certainly capable of suffering, so maple syrup for me. Final question topic, after specifically mentioning this in my Who is Mike the Vegan video, people are still asking about my beard color and why it is different than my hair color, and some people even find it, quote, disturbing. Yes, my beard is naturally red, yes, my hair is naturally brown, and no, I am not gonna dye either of them to please you. Okay, for the next Q&A, please post your questions below or go to my Instagram account, at MikeTheVegan, and hopefully I will get your question into the next Q&A. And finally, I just want to give a big thank you to all my Patreons over at my Patreon. We're about a third of the way to my get a camera goal, so I'm pretty sweet about that because I started it pretty recently, and I'm super thankful. All right, I will see you next video.